everyone, welcome to the Forge Alliance broadcast. I'll be your host, Waffle, and today we're looking at the U2000 WWPC tournament for this week. And we have Zoth vs. Congreve on Dry Canyon. This is the first game. I, Although this is the second game I'm casting, I did cast the second game first because this was the last one uploaded to the forum. So when I check back, this was here, and I'm going to go ahead and cast it. Because it is the first game, I'm... Although you know it as the first game you're seeing, because... Well, I'm hoping to edit this in first. Magic of video, right? But, anyway, it is Zonk vs. Congreve. Congreve masking himself under the name of Varro. I don't know what that's from, if anything. It is a cool name. Bees, you're cool. And the map is Dry Canyon. Typical ladder map. We'll see what's going on here. Anything weird? Um, we're seeing a 5 Pigeons second land build, 8 Pigeons third land. You couldn't be more standard if you tried. And Zok going ahead, he's going to go 8 Pigeons second air, which you can do on this map get that early air out more effectively because there are these rocks which you can reclaim you can look at the ecos it's 75, these are I believe 25 mass, no? there's 75 mass so 75 mass in each of those rocks will allow you to keep your eco going a little longer and because his opponent is not going a second air build he'll have the time to produce those air units without being delayed by whatever Conrad is doing on the bottom side. So it looks like he will be going for some sort of fourth air play. Early rating on the side. Zock showing off his micro skills. But eventually he will be cleaned up. Kept really micro against two two tanks. And that will get taken out as well. Thus uh Zock finally getting some return on his investment. A successful raid through the back will clean up the NG and the mass extractor, and possibly more if you can do that first inti coming out from the Zonk, playing it defensively, and a second bomber. So, choices of faction on this map, Zonk, going for an Aeon. Interesting choice considering there are these mid sized choke points here and here, and arguably here. Let's see how well he can kite with that Aurora. But anyway, Viral moving two tanks to raid the bottom. And Bomber coming out, getting the scouting until seeing Congress ACU going through the middle. And he coming out. Looks like it will be able to intercept successfully. Oh, it looks like a little bomb comes off. And it is a hit. Doc continues to deny that rear mass extractor. So he is behind the map control himself. Viral getting an extra 7 mass per second. And then, no. I don't know. Things are happening. But Varro in the back will attack his map control and mixes. And this might not have been a good place to pull the power considering he can't defend this. Although it typically is a pretty good place to pull your power. And it looks like he will be able to defend this successfully. But meanwhile, Congreve attacking on the right side again. Congreve being very aggressive, forcing Zoth to do crazy things. Zok just now getting a radar. It looks like his power will not be able to actually be defended here. Contrary to what I just said. Looks like the mechs will be targeted first. Do some unfortunate tragedy of subcoms auto-targeting. You do always auto-target the right targets. Or moving his ACU to the left. I'd like to see him do some aggressive plays with this. Zok looking to cut off reinforcements on the back. And it looks like Kungri will forward him back. Zok lost his power. He's still not power stalling though. But with significantly more power. He's wasting most of that. But he's probably looking for an ACU upgrade. Emergency point fence going up in the middle of Zok's base. Will not be completed. Zok has a bunch of tanks in his base right now. Things are not looking good 
for him and his ACU is found without an army and Varv should be able to clean this up if he does not mess this up and I doubt he will. Congreve is quite the skill player as is Zoc because this is in fact O2000 did I say U12000? I was lying oh no Varv, oh no don't let him live like he was coming in from the back urgent veterans and bonus Congreve you let him live here, I will never forgive you. And oh, no! The units, they're going to raid! He's on less than 2,000 health, you could have killed him! Easily! There, you better not let him win. And, uh, Conrad is in a vastly superior position. I guess it was a risk management thing, he did not want to take the risk when he was already winning. Which I guess is what he considered he was doing right now. better to have a... I don't know. I'm trying to think of something I need to say. This definitely deserves something profound. Mm, dear for life. Go, go to his channel. He, he's profound. Oh, that made me think. Guile, why have you forsaken us? If, in case you didn't know, Guile has started casting League of Legends, in addition to his Supreme Commander content, which isn't actually a bad thing. It should bring in um, some of the League of Legends community, expand his channel, which is always a good thing. More people learning about Forge Alliance. It's what you gotta do. Tell your friends, your neighbors, random people on the internet. Zox Air Force doing a bit of damage, and interestingly enough, Hungry deciding noble noble anti-airs. This is something I always wondered about pro players. Pro players typically do not make any mobile anti-airs. I like typically I will do 1 in 15 or 1 in 10 but pro players will just do no mobile anti-airs at all. They are pretty awful at being anti-airs. I don't know if that really justifies not making any of them at all. And defensive point defense probably won't be completed. We have Sulamont. And a kind of an inconvenient battle in this little pass. Units can't really get any good positioning off. So Kargiv does have a significant army in the back. Zok with numbers though. If Zok can win this, things will not be that good for Kargiv. He's got a point defense here in case he loses. But it looks like Zok decides who needs kiting. Apparently him. Zok. Is that a double gun upgrade? Give me that tab. It is double gun. On his ACU. Congreve. Varro. Congreve. Person. And there's a three scout raiding party. This is the most effective thing ever, guys. Right? Right? It looks like Congreve will push through this position here. Zoxin just not complete any point defenses today, though he does have two Tech 2 Master Crackers working on his third. He is on less than half of Congreve's mass, and I don't see really how he can recover if he's losing this again. The only way I can see a victory is if Congreve conti continues to feed Zoc. Which is a definite possibility. I hope he doesn't. Because he has definitely has his game one. And there is Tech 2 Land HQ out. Oh, I forgot to mention this is an NG redesigned game. Which is certainly an interesting set of rules. I'm not sure how I feel about it. It is better because it opens up more options for players, but at the same time doesn't feel like Subcom should feel. I don't know. Do you, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure a lot of people on the forums do argue passionately one way or another, but a bomber is out for Zoc. This is where the mobile anti-air would have been useful. Or just using your interceptors, either way. Uh, Mongoose is the choice of unit for uh, Congreve, which is, in my opinion, the correct choice, because Zoc is in no position to do any tech to land whatsoever. Well, 
He shouldn't be in a position to do any take two land whatsoever. So he does have enough enough reclaim to fund a small upgrade here. And if he can just continue to kite with Mongoose, these, these roars will be useless. I think now is a critical moment if uh, Congreve were to attack before this tech two point fence is completed. He would have a great opportunity to run in, kill the double gun ACU, kill the small squadron of units, and win. So I think this is the second major opportunity where he is, where uh, Congreve has the chance to win. Although Zok is marching forward with his ACU, he is going to face off against a lot of the big army. Though he doesn't see the whole thing, he must assume it. there's a lot more to it. Scout coming off. Congreve. Stop being a coward. He does have Tech 2 Wind Gun on the ACU, which will counter pretty much everything here. Zok getting up his overcharges. He didn't even have overcharges. Come on, Congreve, stop it. Attack! Like Tia for Life always says, if you're not sure if you have the advantage, assume you do, and attack anyway. Because he does. He needs to assume that he has the advantage, and move forward with that. So I don't think Zok can last much longer in this position. He's getting attacked by a gunned ACU. Unless Kongri messes this up atrociously, he will survive. As you can he has all that extra health, all that extra regen, and overcharges. <laughs> See you. Oh, hello, person. He's probably quitting. Don't quit on me. Hmm. That game sound sound just sounds a little loud. Probably should turn that down. Either way, this is his ox base is him completely run over. The stick to land factory is a goner. His ACU shouldn't be that far behind. Mongoose will pretty much take out of this. He has lost his over ability to overcharge emergency point defenses being placed all over the place. Not that they do much against Mongoose. And at this point, it is game over for Zoc. There's nothing he can really do in this position to win against Sparrow, who has access to lots of reclaims, which you will now acquire. So I'm just going to put it on a plus 10. So we can see Congreve win. Congreve, why aren't you winning? No, yes, go ahead, win, please. Please. Take two points built up here. Just continuing raids coming on the right side. Looks like Kagi will. So I think that's like the fourth time he could have won. Right there. Pushed in before all these stationary defenses went up. He still has air control. He still has a more powerful army. And now he has Tech 3 land. And his choice of being is your heads. Okay. It's a valid choice against uh, PD creeps. Thing. They can't actually target the PD behind the wall. They just have so much GPS they can go through the wall. Yeah, that'd be quick. Hell good. Zoc desperately trying to get tech to air. I'm not be surprised to see Mercies. He loses to Mercies. Don't. You dare. Zoc now going dang dangerously low on himself. Yet again. Running into tech two point fences. Down below 3k health. And he survives. Alright, Gongreve. What were you thinking during this match? I'm quite interested. Perhaps I'm missing something so completely obvious of why Gonk is not dead. That just because I'm a vastly more inexperienced player, Congreve is going to go ahead and get Tech 3. Perhaps he wants to play a long game. He doesn't really care about winning, that's an option. And Mercy's now coming out, will be taken out by the massive cloud of air. 
being produced. There is significant air defense for Biro. And now another run by Carnegie. Will this be the end of Zoc? Tune in next time now. No, it's not happening. And there is a lot of tech green here. All of Zoc's power is now dead. I think at this point we can safely assume that he will not survive this assault. GG's. That magnificent UEF arsenal will work once again. And there we go. Took him out twice as long as I think I think it should have. Sock was terribly out of position on that early rush. You could have easily killed them even if you just followed up with your ACU. That's easy to say as an observer. Casting this game down from a godlike perspective. Hope you enjoyed this. The count is now uh, 01 in favor of Congreve. And here we go to game two. Just remember, I casted this first, so. Yeah. Hello and welcome to another uh, Forge Line Terror cast. I'll be your host, Wackle, and today we're casting the over 2,000 finals between Zok and Gongreve, who has changed his name to Varro for some reason. This did take place on the NG redesign mod, which changes around how uh, build capacity works in that, uh, well not really how build capacity works, but how it evolves as the game transitions towards the late game, as in Tech 2 Engineers now have more build power, and you only need to upgrade one HQ factory to get to the Tech Suite on all of, well, to upgrade the rest of your factories. So you don't have to spam out of a single factory, you can spam out of multiple factories, and that is a legitimate idea. So the first map is uh, Open Palms, interesting choice. It is going to be a Cybern versus UEF. And on this map, I definitely have to give the advantage to Zonk with the Cybern. On this map, the Cybern Mantis speed makes a, quite a big difference because of there's these huge open planes on the top and bottom of the map. And slight difference in builds coming off here. Zonk going three engines to the Hydro and getting second air on four P gens. So he's offsetting the, his power to the Hydro, though not completely because he's still keeping his ACU here to get these speed gens. This is actually the first time I've ever seen this build. I wonder if it's thin specific and relies on the early reclaim. There's some shots. Looks like a Mantis gets an early kill. And Varro back here doing all the more standard things. You've got engines in the back going second land. ACU to the Hydro gets his third air. A bit non-standard, but still reasonably sane. This will come out with both players having even amounts of power, and first NT for Congreve, anticipating first power, but there will also be first NT from Zok. Looks like early raiding. And first bomb comes off. A little single NG, but it does finish the factory in time, so not much of, of a delay in build capacity, and it will get cleaned up quite nicely by Congreve's Air Force. Congreve will be moving his ACU to the top of the map, and Zok will move his ACU to the bottom. This is typical standard play on open palms. You try to draw the line somewhat like this across. And keep your and send your ACU on the shortest path path up to here or down to here. Although Zok will be able to raid around the back, he'll be able to take out Mass Extractor and possibly this engineer. Good raiding from Zok, but now he'll have to deal with this threat of four tanks moving in. This might be able to actually this is on tank. 
although this looks is supposed to do quite a bit of damage. Although Congreve is leading in the map control, specifically because his ACU was used as build power, where Zok is moving his ACU forwards. He's actually using it to try and control this lower expansion. Zok will move in and secure the Submantis. Congreve, is he gonna scout it? No, Congreve has a scare skill, but he is not scouting. It looks like this engineer will be defended and these raiding groups cleaned up, as well as this raiding group in the back. This NG won't be as lucky. It looks like it will fail on its mission to survive. Congreve moving in. We'll deny this expansion, at least temporarily. And Sock moving quite close with his ACU. Congreve definitely preparing that transport. You want to drop to get these extra six mixes on the mountains. It's always very nice. Although one thing to do if your opponent manages to build up on these mount to drop onto these mountains, just get an engineer and have them build up on this ledge, and you can spam across. Looks like this expansion engine will get taken out. And Congreve will move to take the upper expansion, so we're seeing a vertical split this time. Definitely changing things up. Congreve will definitely try to uh, defend this. Might, it might look like he's going to try to cut off reinforcements here to Zok's position. Zok, realizing what's going on, will retreat. Realizing he now has two armies in a position that could threaten his base. Zok with big map control advantages though. He has managed to secure the back and part of this expansion. And let's see if this run by manages to do anything other than feed Zok. Don't feed the Zok. Unless it's pizza, then you can feed him pizza. He's actually been doing a lot of nice streams recently. I recommend you check out his Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash zockyzock and bombers being used defensively there's nowhere to hear so this will be safe drops coming out from Congreve and Zock almost at the same time we're gonna jump right next to each other two NGs from Congreve but a significantly larger amount of NGs from Zock Looks like Zok will be able to take up this, this higher expansion. Actually, the no equal amounts of engineers. It'll be up to who's paying attention. Looks like Zok is the one paying attention. And the transport decides to leave him to die. Although now, Congreve taking the map control advantage, his commander has secured this top expansion that's normally Zok. Even though he has not managed to secure this bottom expansion yet, Zok does not possess it. So Zok now getting the Tech 2 on his ACU. And Barra moving out. No walls on the PD. Don't be annoying. We should have put walls there to protect it. And now Congreve with a rather large arm army. Big engagement on the bottom side of the map. This will determine who wins this expansion. Critical bombs come off. Some units, and it looks like uh, Zok definitely getting a victory there, but both sides deciding to retreat. Actually, Bar Congreve deciding to retreat quite far back. Congreve has secured the silver expansion, the upper ledge, so ledges spread evenly. Zok has been making significantly more power, and he's been using almost all of it. He's not in the air spam, though. Or ACU upgrades. He's getting a Tech 2 power in the middle of the map. That would be a nice target to TML. If I do say so myself. Zuck so looking to reclaim this expansion and even out the map control. I don't know if Congreve will be having it. He, it does appear he has numbers. So he should be able to reclaim that expansion. Although Vara without many units take advantage of the fact that Zok does not have many uh, artillery. Point defense, point defense 
does go down, so if, if he is in a bit of danger, this could kill him. But there is this force here that will be able to back him up if necessary. Probably just not able to secure this massive tractor. Just not happening for him. And Pyro has a Pyro slash Congreve has a force that's sandwiched. Will be able to take out uh, Zox. Army as it comes in, different different positioning advantage for Congreve actually now. Zox managing to go around. Point events will get cleaned up, and so will the single mass extractor. But a good chunk of mass now in that position for Zox to reclaim. Congreve casually walking board, taking a radar. And Zoc managing to secure the middle of the map. Congreve is working on a significant map control advantage still with this expansion. Let's see, is he turning that into any teching? He's got a single tech to master character actually anymore. I see a single tech to master character. Let's look at Zoc. I'm not seeing tech to master characters from Zoc. So a single tech to master character on the field. A bit of engagement through the checkpoint in the middle. Numbers for Zoc here, but numbers for Congreve in the mid position. Well, his units are getting stuck, not beautiful positioning. Congreve yet again tries to reclaim this position, and it looks like he will fail because he just does not have enough units. Oh, a second. Massive character in the back. Take the massive character in the back. He needs to defend this. There is a uh, point defense, but it might not be enough. That's a TML headed towards Varro's ACU. This so he'll get hit. Takes a significant amount of damage. Will he get another shot off before? No, Varro knows what the Congreve knows what he's doing. Will retreat. Now he'll need to rush up some TML, which is occurring. The Tech 2 HQ is up for Congreve. I'm not seeing any. Tech 2 is from somewhere. Tech 2 and uh, air HQ was up. Getting some gunships. And it looks like this Tech 2 Master Tracker will be lost eventually. What if it's being built in the back? And Zoc will now start a PD creep into the middle. Possibly trying to draw a line down them down here. Two team two TMDs. Gets hit once, and will not be able to take out the Tecton Master in a single shot. Big mass field growing here in the middle of the map as the two forces continue to just run into his, each other endlessly. Farrow needs to watch himself get into a patrol order. Can it hit him? It could, if he knew where he was. Congress needs to be careful. Patrol orders counter TML strikes. On your comm, that is, and a single tech to flap will prevent these gunships from doing too much damage. And these global points will go down. This is an opportunity for uh, Congreve to attack a long tactical missile launcher if he chooses to take it. Otherwise, he could just choose to casually walk between all his valuable assets and not actually do much. Point events continuing to deal damage. This horse needs to move in. You can see what's going on because of the new change. You can see the beam setting his units, and it looks like he'll just decide to do a run by rather than engage. 18 kills on that take two point events. Air Force definitely an advantage for uh, Congreve, especially since this minor tech one air fight will occur over take two flak. These bombers are trying to be used just defensively. Will not be able to, but uh, Zoc has managed to push his way into the back. He's reclaimed all this stuff, and he's got a map control advantage, but he does not have a mass advantage. No, he doesn't. Let's take a minute to look at the reclaim numbers. Zoc sending about 10,000. Viral sitting in at least 6,000. Stop feeding the Zoc. 
It's almost as bad as feeding the voodoo. It's interesting, a very large tech one force in this area. Well, this launch is definitely coming out, and this creep will continue. If all these tanks were artillery, I'd say they could easily take it out. But they're not all, all artillery. So, I can't say... This has definitely been an interesting match with both players taking up non-standard positions with their ACUs. Both having to defend and attack constantly. And this is, expansion can just not be raided by Congreve. Zoc defending it very well. And like, Congreve who cannot defend his own expansion, except now it looks like he will be able to take it back. Zoc's still leading with a slight score lead. He is up at Tech 2 P-Gen. Now getting hit with mold missile launchers. He does not have any TML or TMDs, so this will be quite effective. Well, now he'll start it. There's a lot of tick two point defense here to hold the line. And Kongi deciding, you know what I should do with. 160 tanks, run them across a 200 meter choke point with the Tech 2 PD shoot against them. Wait, no, that, that's a bad idea? I don't know. And not much damage was done that day in the back. Although still quite a bit of mass to be picked up by any player who is willing to take it. Concrete will retreat with his ACU. All missile launchers through the middle, realizing the dock position is pretty much impenetrable with three cyber TMDs. I do disagree with Baro's continued tank spam. He would be a bit wise to switch to add a, to have a much heavier RD composition. What's he looking at? It's one already for every five tanks. It's really, really light, especially for UEF player. Detective Lex will come forward to defend this, as well as uh, Congreve's air. Although Zoc definitely leading in the air numbers right now, Congreve will have to rely on that Tech 2 flak, which will get a considerable amount of kills. Oh. That was a waste of nine inties and a few gunships. Good job, gunships. You got three tanks. You're a real hero. Oh, it's interesting to note that Varro is going with the pillars. You know what? I'm in at 21. You see, you usually see some player do a tech three transition, especially with all these units on the field and these standoffs that are occurring. This could be a positioning advantage for uh, Kongri, but he decides to retreat. When you are defending this, you want to be holding the top ground and not assaulting it, because you get what's essentially a concave over your opponent's units, so you can get more of your units firing at any given time. And Tech 2 PD fronts will collide. Zoc, you have stealth. Zoc does not have stealth, but he just doesn't care. No, he doesn't, doesn't care. And Barrel now going with the Tech 3 land. He's going with the... Oh, these units are not used anywhere near uh, near enough. Spearheads. Spearheads. They are specifically designed to counter Tech 2 BB creeps so incredibly hard. That's a fire ground order. And Congreve deciding, well, now or never. I'm not going to ever take this. I'm going to throw my entire army at it. And then throw in the towel. I doubt it's that drastic. But Zoc is managing to get this position back. Pull this launchers and take the already coming out. You really want to be picking one or the other. And now, a significant amount of Corsair is flying above Baro's ACU. 
sniping the Tech 2 flag. Oh, things are not looking good for John Grieve. ACU does not appear to be targeted right now. Actually, it is. He's just doing a nice job dodging. That's what you want them to do. Force them to use all their APM to dodge. And Kagi, with a ridiculous army in the back of his base, if this were to run up around and into Zok's base, it would be completely devastating. Zok now leading on the eco front with 20 more mass per second and 1,000 more power per second. And now Zok has t had time to prepare. He's got a force in place with lots of Tech 2 wangers on the field. And now a loyalist should be able to clean this up along with all these Corsairs in the air. And Zok will push directly into Viral's base. Tech 2 powers are going down. Shields, point events are all the way. They're just completely gone. There are Percivals being called out. The new Titans. At this point, Barrow might as well just push on the ACU and see if it works. Because his base is pretty much lost. He has no power to work with. By no power, I mean. Well, he has less than half the power. When you're still in the base, you just can't clean them up. There's just too much clutter, and his units cannot efficiently get, a get around the base. Desperately trying to get out more Percivals. Do not recommend this. He definitely needs Titans. Now things are looking very nice for Zok. He's leaning heavily on the eco. He's got quite a lot of stationary defenses. But his biggest threat is this army running at directly at him. Which is exactly what it'll do, but it looks like Zok's force will arrive in time. We've got a lot of loyalists, a lot of wanger. And he will possibly be able to defend this position. I Kongi running right into his position. Looks like he might die. Nope. Percival's taking their stand. Percival's now more effective considering there are loyalists on the field. So they will go down. Are trying to run up over on the position, but he's bringing his ACU. Why are you bringing your ACU? You, he might have had a chance if he didn't bring his ACU. But then the game was probably lost in the end, considering Zok had way too much power and mass per second. Look at Reclaim. 10,000 more for Zok. That's a lot of tanks. You can build a lot of tanks on 10,000 Reclaim. So that is game one. It is one in the O favor of Zok. And we'll be on to game two. Hello, welcome to game three Worldwide People's Championship over 2000 finals. This is between Zonk and Congreve. And the map is Loki. The score is currently tied up as, at 1 1. And this map was chosen by Congreve. So he must feel fairly confident, confident about this. Loki, quite the old map, quite the popular map been on the ladder for quite a bit. And it is actually a StarCraft port. As you can see, it has quite obvious mains, naturals thirds. Actually, I think, would this be your third? I'm not exactly sure. It's hard to tell on the cliff side when you're playing SOCOM rather than StarCraft. Either way. Viro coming out, slash Congreve. Going to do a 6 Legion second air build. And Zok, on the other hand, will be doing a an 8 Pigeon second air build. Adding in that extra Pigeon for the lulls. So, Interesting. Zok actually sending out a very early artillery to this position. That's an interesting play. I guess you can shoot down on this hydro from up here and deny that if your opponent decides to incorporate that into their build, uh, Kongi will not. But a Zok on the other hand will get that hydro and send NGs across to control that. Early raids through the middle, successful from Zok. Though so this tank, sh these two tanks should be able to clean up quite nicely for Concrete. 
though the hunter will see it with the scout and retreat, splitting up with his scout to confuse the raiding groups. Because on the raider, you, you can't tell the difference between this and this. Actually, you can. Only if you're paying. No, no, you actually can't. They do move the same speed. I'm mistaken, but War Hunter made it so far. Will be cleaned up by Congreve's ACU. No, won't actually. He actually misses it. And by about a single second, he'll be able to take out this MG. Either way, we see two interceptors out from Morrow. Congreve is not going with a bomber. We'll see what he can do with his Zeus. And the artillery. Just wondering what he can do now. Sitting there up on a ledge. Decision will be to move him on a very. What's that? No, it's this order. Move him to the lower plateau. And Cargy definitely making that play for early air. We'll be now getting out a bomber. And can Cargy make this bomb work? He can make this work. So we'll, oh no! No! That was horrible. He could have prevented this factory. It would have been another minute before Zok could get up there. Oh. Wow. That's painful. But I've, I believe the problem is when you have your bomber and he goes higher and then suddenly drops off, his AI will get very confused and it will drop the bomb short. It is a bug, I believe, and I hope they eventually patch it. Thank you, Pip, and the pilot, and all those guys. You've been doing a great job. Some people have not been very grateful on the forums, but you have to realize that a lot of us do appreciate your work. It wouldn't be anywhere near as great if it wasn't for you guys. So I'd like to thank you for that. Zoff coming down, cleaning this up. And Lockdown managing to secure this top expansion. Which he shouldn't have. And is not now able to push forward. There was a emergency point constructed, but the walls the walls weren't finished. A few more seconds and the walls would have been up to defend that point fence and it would have done a significant amount of damage. One more damage. This little writing group shouldn't be able to do it. It's outnumbered. But now Zaro sitting on that map control advantage? Or perhaps he's just reclaiming? He's building a significant amount of power though. Like a lot of power. He's got two NGs on the power spam. Versus... Actually two NGs on the power spam, but that power spam was started a lot later. I will cast this entire game with holding on the middle mouse button. Actually, you know that would be awful. This expansion will not be defended. The point defense will not be completed in time, and that should give us a good, good map to kill Avenge, which he already has. He already has a slight map to kill Avenge. I guess from this being here and now, he'll have this expansion, this expansion over that expansion as an advantage. There are two point defenses. Eight mantis, but Congreve's ACU should be able to clean it up. Ah, I need some water. I've been talking to some of my real life friends about how they commentate. Apparently, drinking lots of water is a thing. I don't typically do that too much, but perhaps I should start. Single artillery piece from the Congreve making its way. Not much happening though. Just a little run by us continuing to get cleaned up of slightly larger and larger groups of units. The main critical thing is Zok's ability to continually deny this area and this area while defending the upper position up here. This is giving him a significant amount of map control and this allowing him to catch up on power. Has Congreve stopped his power? Yeah, he stopped his power production. And I'm guessing he's wasting most of it. Yep. About 200 power per second, he could be running an upgrade. 
buddy, isn't it? Ooh. Zonk with very defensive point defenses. Notice that the key aspect of Zonk's playstyle, if he secures an area and he thinks you're going to raid it, will build as many point defenses as it takes to cover that area. You got the pretty good part of a playstyle. It's a bit expensive, but it can pay off if you get to keep the massive crackers. This end up quite easily. And Congreve is quickly making next to no progress on this top area here. Actually losing tanks. And there's all the points events have been taking out, so you should be able to secure this now, but uh oh. Zonk with a ma massive force. Congreve decided not even to run, he's just gonna hide his ACU in the corner and hope he doesn't see it. This force is vastly too small, at least they can try to take out the factory. Maybe the tag order would help. Congreve diverting his entire armed forces. I wonder if he actually just went control L. Right click about here. So they'll all be streaming in one unit at a time. Enough for a fairly compact Mantis group to take advantage of. Oh, this Mantis group could take out all these units, even though there are probably twice as many units here. Oh no. Oh no. Oh god, why? Although it stops smickering against the artillery, and now he'll get squished by a concave. So the veterans will not survive, but now he has Kongu now has to deal with this force up on this ledge. He's taking out the natural. How will water survive without his Vespian gas? Or mass attractors, either way. I mean, they're, they're, they're the same thing. Except none of it all, right? Yeah. And game audio. So right now I think we're seeing a significant advantage for Zok, considering he has the map control. Are you really being forced into this upper third of the map? Zok working on about twice the mass per second. Looking at the reclaim figures, we get Zok sitting at 8,000, almost 8,000 for Congreve. And tech to land out from Congreve, he's made a few pillars, getting a shield. Shield a bit late. That shouldn't make too big of a difference. This would have been a great opportunity to squish this army before it retreated through the choke point. I think that was a big missed opportunity. That was a vastly superior force with all the tech 2 and shield and stuff. And tech 3 land has been rushed out from Zok. He does have a tech 2, two tactical missile launcher in the middle of the field. He strategically placed this just so he could hit exactly up to the unit of all the massive tech 2 massive tractors in Congress base. Congress has been doing quite a bit of teching. More teching than Zonk has. Looking at the massive tractor counts. You're not Congreve. Zooming out, we see four massive tractors versus Congreve's I guess only five. Well, there were six. A significant force here, and Kong doesn't even know what's happening. It's just perspective. He does not know about any of this. Stealth, I guess? No, not stealth. Just poor scouting. He does lose most of stealth before deciding to retreat. There's so much defensive structure here. This is essentially Congreve's entire army. He's being minced by tech 2 point defense. They're getting so many kills. A lot of this moving across the field. And at 20, not much to see Congreve can do. Snipe might be his best option at this point. More check the points that's being rushed up. But the base is finally getting overrun. But Congreve's issue does get hit, killed by the tech 2 point defense.
well. That was a bit wasteful, wasn't it? Either way, Zok showing off his superior tactical prowess, managing to secure this expansion and this expansion. If, if there's anything in this game that I felt was a bit unfair to Congreve, it was the height map on that bomber failing. This factory should, should not be there. It should not have been able to control this expansion. If that had not have been there, Congreve would have been able to have a lot more mass. A little bit more mass to work with. Plus, he'd have a bunch of arm of forces freed up to fight over to this in this area of the map. So I think that was very unlucky from Congreve to have that happen to him. But all is fair in the war. And now it is 2-1, favoring Zok. Move on to game four. This is a best of four, best of five. So Zok wins the next one. That will be the series. Moving on. And welcome to. With White Peoples Championship 2000 Game 4. The score is currently 2 and 1 in favor of Zok, and I think we're in for quite a long game, considering Zok has chosen Burial Mounds. As you can guess, this is a 20 by 20 4v4 map with no shortage of mass extractors at all. I wonder if these things, how does civilian take to our party work? Haven't really played on this map before. So, it's the first time for me as well. I'll be expecting absolutely nothing to happen for the first few minutes, so I think I'm just gonna he go ahead on a plus 10. Considering nothing interesting at all will happen for at least a while. It's not coming out. Typical second air build. Which is really the only way to play this map. First entity versus first bomber. Now something actually starting to happen. Let's slow it down to plus four. Zuck sending his first bomber up to the top most expansion of Congreve. Whereas an early drop coming up from Congreve will attempt to drop the spawn position. We've got three NGs looking to start a land spam across. This map will definitely test each player's attention and APM to the maximum. So definitely going for some land scouts. You could actually feasibly kill that radar if he knew what he was doing. Not knew what he's doing in terms of how to play the game, but the intelligence didn't know that was a radar. Either way, Zok expanding significantly faster. Then Congreve. Slow think down. Zok has almost. He has this expansion, he has this expansion, and he has his main. Whereas Congreve has neglected both of these expansions in terms of starting a major land spam on the bottom position here. So, what are we seeing here? We're seeing that Zok has managed to get an early map control advantage, which should transition into more tacking and at the end of the day more units which is going to be mainly tech 2 navy and tech 3 land and eventually tech 3 air once he has enough tech 2 power generators Zop will now move out to attempt to round this expansion from Congreve. He is currently going to scout ahead with the snoop. We will find Zop started building up in this position and possibly he'll see this. Zakesh is looking to start a base behind this expansion of four bar. And now Zok going ahead and he'll start land spamming across the pond. Being careful to avoid this particular artillery installation. How how can work in the shoot? Can actually tell Zok going to go ahead and do another drop. Zop? No. Drops are definitely the best way to test a player's attention. Because they're unexpected, you don't know they're coming, and oh, oh that was awkward. Two transports kind of brushed by, said hello to each other. One's the point fence will have to go up, try to fend this, there is a radar. And two NGs rushing to the expansion. 
And Zoth does not respond in time. They're just congregate, so it doesn't really matter. So, like I was saying, drops. They're not expected. You have to deal with them. It takes a lot of action to deal with the drop. And it looks like this spam has been spawned. Zoth is deciding to do some sort of counter spam over here. And bombers will deal with most of the spam. Zoth going ahead and opening with his navy. No navy probe congregate yet. So Congreve deciding to fortify this. Interesting choice of Congreve. He's managed to stay with two UEF the entire time. I don't know if I agree with this on this map. Especially that he's decided not to go with an early navy. Early navy versus Aeon, especially when they spam across, is quite deadly. Zonk now going to grab his final expansion. He will now be running off of five bases. I don't know, man. I think Loki... Now I'm starting to sound like a StarCraft caster. It's all Loki's fault. Punch them. Might be able to deny something, but it's not really in a, any sort of choke pointy position. So it'll be just as easy to walk around it. It's operating his ACU to this bottom position. Worried that the spam will overwhelm him. And Tech 2 Air coming out from Naki. He's leading vastly in power, which is very critical. Once Tech 3 Air comes out, there's not much to stop it on such a map this, on a map this big. Sam's have not been buffed to the point where there are no fly zones, but rather very costly to fly zones. And thus, Tech 3 Air can still be a game winner, especially when it comes around. Um, I'm going to put my and on and guess minute 16 third air on a map this large which is quite effective don't get me wrong it looks like these this expansion will finally get cleaned up did not have enough land factories there Zuck will be able to hold on to this expansion a bit longer although he will be losing this expansion things are definitely shifting in Congate's favor transport scouting you realize you're not a ghetto right all right Pretty cool. Take two gunships coming out. Trying to will down the spam. And we'll run actually run into the tech one point which will get which will get eight kills. Making money back. Running into Zoxic Commander, getting tech two. Also I realized the other day that the way you can tell without Looking at the left versus right, because Tech 2 will cost you 180 power, where as guns will cost you 280 power. So, Zog continuing to hold up the expansion, he does not have enough forces, but he does have gunships that are willing to whittle down the spam, which might be effective at holding off this a bit longer. So not much longer. Hongreep has managed to go Tech 2. Actually putting his HQ factory down here. Quite surprising. Probably want your HQ factory up here somewhere. Safe. Protected. Considering you can just can build as many Tech 2 regular factories as you want. Mm. Okay. Hello, FAF. How's it going? Or helpless NGs, you know, Concrete, if you gotta take care of the NGs, the NG Union will be after you if you just kept keep letting them die to these gunships. Although I see you'll be bringing your entire Air Force away from them. Yeah, I, I, th I think you'll be hearing from them sometime soon. Although a few of them left behind will be doing some damage. Oh, and I guess bringing them next to the Auroras would never hurt. Yet I digress being way too hard on Congreve. He's played fantastically and vastly better than I could ever hope to play against Zoth. And this may be the 
end for this expansion up here. Just trying to get the tech two out. Single tech one PD. I might be able to hold it off for long. Just get a few kills before going down. Well, the tech two now coming out. Single obsidian should be produced. Two obsidians. But those aren't just not powerful enough. More gunships coming in. And a big spam war about to take place. Tech 2 advantage for Congreve in this location. Zark fully expecting to run to the units. We'll build a little firebase on the edge of this mountain. Though so using his gunships to deflect uh, any attempts to a get a attack this expansion. Zark attempting to deny navy. Has failed. There's a single NG building naval factories. Something I'd, I'd like to cast, NG Mod Fenton. I wonder how that would work with the Navy, and how that would affect its balance. Especially in early Tech 2 rushes. Restore is now up from Zaki, does have that Tech 3 air, which will be difficult to counter. It looks like Kongi will just go ahead, throw his entire Air Force at it, he's got a load of interceptors. It's quite a lot of interceptors, and he's got a load of gunships. Zonk will be seeing all of this through his all-seeing submarines, and the battle goes off. There are obsidians versus pillars versus restorers versus point of them. Restorers getting loads of kills. There's nothing here to counter them. Plus all the artillery fire. And the very compact units of Zonk. Zonk did a great job kiting, and now he's just gonna run in, catch the units, prevent them from retreating. Now, Hungry realize, must realize he's behind right now. He needs to get on that power production where he's his power. His tech 2 power is up here. He's a single tech 2 power that is not enough tech 2 power. I digress. Anyway, Zark now almost three times power. Another 20 more mass. I'm looking at reclaimed Zark. 14,000 versus. Whoa! Whoa, 32,000, good job. Good job, good job, Congreve. You've actually, this is the first time you've actually led on Reclaim, but that doesn't matter. There's a strap bomber headed right towards your factory, and GG. Seize the strap bomber, and that's, that's game. Not much you can do against it. There's gunships raiding this. He's managed to hold off this expansion, and there goes Congress ACU. So Zark has won Worldwide People's Championship, going 3 and 1 against Congreve. It's off to both of these players. They've done a fabulous job. Although Zok, here with the superior plays, managing to win it. I don't know what Zok was doing on Dry Canyon. Maybe he had a bit too much pizza. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this Worldwide People's Championship. I hope it was a bit enjoyable, more enjoyable than my previous one, which had horrendous audio problems, which I'm still feeling bad about. Apologies. So anyway, I think I'll wrap this cast up. Thank you for your time, and I have a PM to attend to. So good night.